So why Python, why ML? One part of the story that's really important is the cloud. And it didn't used to be that important. And I wanna give an example and tell a quick story. So back in the day, I was a consultant working at a large customer site. We were migrating an application to the cloud. This was one of the things we were doing. And all of the end users, my job was user engagement, all the end users thought they were gonna get these new features and functionalities. Things would be better, faster when this application was migrated to the cloud. And unfortunately, part of my job was to tell them, well, no, you know how you just go into your web browser and you click around? Well, it's gonna be exactly the same. The only difference is instead of having it in the data center that we own or you're, you guys own, it's gonna be a data center you don't own. Literally, that's the only difference. No new features, no new functionality. And in fact, part of the migration, we're not even that confident, you may lose some functionality for a little while, but I promise we'll get it back. So th that was the story. Previously, the cloud story was just basically an accounting equation. It was CapEx versus OpEx, capital expenditure versus op operating expenditure. The end user was just, well, I'm, I'm remoting into a Linux server or to a database server or just something that's either in our data center. And again, I'm thinking about bigger companies here, but I'm either using a, a remote machine that's in a data center we own, or I'm using a remote machine in a data center that somebody else owns. And it, from my from my perspective, it's, there's really no difference. That I think has fundamentally changed, especially over the last couple of years. So if you're willing to pay the price of a little bit of Python, if you have some interest in data science and ML, you can now start to use scalable compute and storage tools. Basically what you were promised before is, is much more accessible and much more available. So at a basic level, you can go to somebody like an AWS Azure GCP and you can say, look, I'm gonna throw tons of data at you and put it into inexpensive blob storage. And then I'm gonna spin up lots of compute as part of the processing. I need to write code to, well, I need to first make API calls or write code to spin up those resources. But then I need to write some code to do the processing or the ML or whatever it is. But like I have the fundamental tools available to me. And I'm not just getting a server that was previously a VM and is now still a VM, kind of like it was back in the day. The second thing is the, is the combination of actual vendor tools like SaaS applications and the like that are built on top of some of these ideas to give you more functionality. So before that sounds too pitchy, like think about like a, a Databricks or a Snowflake and, and to make them as simple as possible, like a Snowflake would just be, hey, we have this Postgres database we put on a server somewhere and we want this, we want to do sharding. We want this to scale really nicely. Well, they went ahead and solved that problem for you. So now it's just like, hey, I throw some data over here. I start writing queries. Of course, you're, you can do more than I lake house and all this stuff. But, you know, the idea being that like they've solved this problem of scaling for you and you can just go ahead and use a database and make it easy. And similarly for Databricks, it was like, well, I could, I could, get a Kubernetes cluster and a bunch of storage and I could put Spark on it in a Spark history server and blah, blah, blah. Or I could just go to them and say, hey, give me this Spark cluster. I'm gonna throw a bunch of data here and now I'm gonna start writing my Spark SQL and my PySpark and I'm gonna do my work and I'm not gonna worry about any of those underlying things. So anyway, I'm, I'm getting a bit wordy as I tend to do, but I wanna pull this back because as we get into 2023, like think about you know data science, ML, Python or any programming language. One of the big options, one of the big tools available to you now, you have this big boon in the cloud your co most account, you know, companies, their accounting teams are thinking, hey, we want to do OpEx versus CapEx. Is that a good choice? It depends, but they've largely gone this route and that's really good for you from an experimenting, experimentation standpoint. You can now go get storage and compute. You can apply really interesting algorithms. The price of admission for some of this experimentation though is learning how to code. So if that's on your list, you know, I highly recommend for this year.